Good morning, and thanks for attending the uh, 2021 Right of Way Asset Mapping Exchange. Uh, my name is Matteo Lucio, and I'm the events moderator. As you know from the program, we have about six hours uh, to learn about and discuss today's topic with nine excellent speakers. We will have time for questions at the end of each presentation, as well as during the panel discussion um, this afternoon. Uh, we hope that many of you will also join us uh, for, ha for happy hour networking um, at the end of the event, um, which will enable you to meet in small groups and meet our sponsors. I have been uh, writing for geospatial magazines and editing them for 20 years and have been the managing editor or, or the editor of, of six of them. I am now the editor in chief of uh, the uh, monthly magazine GPS World, um, which last year celebrated uh, its 30th anniversary. So over the past two decades, I have covered satellite navigation, geographic information systems, surveying, and remote sensing, uh, including satellite imagery, aerial, aerial photogrammetry, and uh, LIDAR scanning. All of these technologies and professions are directly relevant uh, to the topic of today's webinar. Um, now, right of way or ROW um, corridors vary uh, greatly, of course. At one extreme, uh, they may contain a single uh, feature, as in the case of a, some kind of a pipeline running through the desert. Um, at the other extreme, and, and much, much more common, uh, is the case of ROWs in densely populated urban areas, uh, which can easily contain dozens of, of public and private um, infrastructure features, um, including, uh, well, let, let's start um, underground, uh, fiber optic cables, water mains, natural gas pipes, sewers, um, and then at the street level, uh, we have things like parking meters, signage, traffic sensors, and then uh, overhead electric, dis electric distribution um, and, and, and telephone wires. Um, so uh, in, in addition, the, these environments are constantly changing. Uh, additional uh, poles, signs, conduits, and so forth are installed. Old ones are replaced. Technology changes. Uh, we go from you know coaxial cables to to fiber optic. Um, uh, we, uh, we need to restore service after disruptions like like storms, um, and and so there's there's always a lot of change uh, going on. And there are many people who, who need uh, an accurate and, and up-to-date um, inventory of, of these features, including um, city planners, developers, um, engineers, uh, and, and public works and utility managers. Um, now, this is especially true as we uh, try to make our cities smarter. Um, so mapping these assets is a, is a constant, you know, Sisyphean uh, task. Uh, by the way, I mentioned the two extremes of, you know, the, the pipeline in the desert and the, and the very busy, um, dense uh, urban environments. Of course, there's the in-between, which is things like uh, um, electrical, um, you know, um, distribution um, through uh, fields and, and forests and so forth, where, um, vegetation encroachment is is usually the biggest concern um 
you know, fortunately, the, uh, the, 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 the technology to, to map uh, these ROW assets is, is improving rapidly. And uh, of course, we have a variety of platforms, um, backpack units for people just, you know, um, technicians just walking down the street, um, vehicles uh, that can drive at normal traffic speeds uh, with LiDAR scanners and, and uh, uh, GNSS, IMU um, uh, devices and so forth. Uh, and of course, uh, we have a proliferation now of UAVs and then manned aircraft uh, are still still relevant um, and then sensors include digital cameras lidar scanners of course and and, uh, and things like uh, gpr ground penetrating radar uh, so we have all these platforms all these sensors and then once the data is collected and processed um, there are many ways to to visualize it uh, including augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and then of course, all kinds of models, uh, 2D models and increasingly 3D models um, of individual features, all the way up to, to digital twins of buildings and uh, eventually of entire cities. Uh, and so the, um, the data collection, the mapping, and, and the, the management of, of these smart cities are will increasingly be, be integrated. Um, and of course, uh, real time uh, data collection becomes more and more um, essential or, or near real time and so forth. Um, and so um, this massive and, and uh, repetitive, you know, tedious uh, work of identifying and, classi and classifying uh, features is being increasingly delegated to automated uh, systems, automated feature extraction software, for example, which is a form of, of, of artificial intelligence. Um, so the presentations today will cover all of these topics and more, uh, including um, comparing uh, 2D and 3D visualization tools explaining uh, the benefits of 3D models um, as you know, uh, advanced spatial analysis tools for, for urban planning, um, exploring the future of, of smart cities and digital twins. Uh, one presentation will uh, um, talk about a, a light equity study and, and poll inventory in the context of the, the transition from um, the transition to LED lighting. Um, another presentation will cover how a, a two-man team can capture 500 miles worth of utility data in, in just uh, two weeks. So um, uh, during um, the, the presentations, you may want to think you may want to think of questions uh, to ask at the end of each presentation and then and or, during the, the panel discussion um, this afternoon at the, at the tail end of, of the event. Um, here are a few questions that I'm hoping will be answered. Uh, what are the key technical challenges uh, to collecting asset data in, in, in dense, crowded, busy urban environments? Um, you know, uh, with all kinds of Practical and you know <laughs> obstacles and and uh, and uh, uh, noise and and uh, and so forth. Um, which collections are best done using uh, which platforms? And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know we have uh, backpack type uh, uh, collection uh, systems. Uh, collection systems uh, uh, mounted on vehicles, UAVs, uh, and so forth. Um, so which is best for, for what, uh, what kind of collection? Um, and the same uh, or similar question about the, the sensors, you know, which, of all the, the, the sensors we have available, um, which are best for which uh, kinds of collections or which kinds of environments and so forth. 
Um, and then what are some of the key challenges in, in integrating and analyzing and, and, and visualizing uh, all this, this data that is, this, that is collected? Um, how long does it take um, to, uh, to collect uh, data? Uh, I guess per mile um, is probably the, uh, the way to think about, about it. Uh, there might be some other metrics. Um, I'd like to, to hear about that. Um, what are some of the typical uh, workflows? And, and what is the division of labor typically between the, the, the field crews uh, who are out there doing the actual data collection, uh, the technicians in the office that, that, that process the data and then uh, those at the, at the client end of things, um, you know, who does, who does what? Um, what are some of the uses of, of all this data? I mean, there's, I mentioned some earlier, but, um, and we can think of many, but, uh, you know, what are some of the most uh, common uh, or, and or interesting uh, uses of uh, ROW asset mapping uh, data? Um, actually, uh, a step before that, what are uh, the actual uh, deliverables uh, from, from the contractors that, that go out and, and collect this data, you know, what kinds of, of files um, as well as metadata and so forth, do they uh, deliver to the, to the clients? And then looking to the future, um, sort of a wish list, you know, what are, what kinds of technical uh, organizational or, or policy improvements um, would most help um, with, with data collection, uh, you know, for ROW asset mapping. So those are some of my questions. Many more will come up uh, uh, and I'll think of some, uh, uh, of course, uh, as you will uh, during the presentations and we'll have, uh, we'll have time for Q&A um, and, uh, and then we'll have a, a wrap up and uh, the panel discussion at the end again, I'm hoping that uh, many of you will, will be able to attend that as well. Um, and, uh, and then um, the, the networking um, after, uh, after the presentation, after the, the, the panel discussion. Um, so uh, the, the first presentation will start in about three minutes um, and uh, uh, will last um, about 45 minutes, including uh, Q and A. Um, and the same uh, with each of the following presentations. Um, and then um, at uh, 1.45, this is all in a mountain time, mountain daylight time. At 1.45, uh, we'll, we'll have the, the, the wrap up and, and panel discussion. Um, and then um, uh, again, 45 minutes for that as well. And uh, you know, at 2.30, I will uh, make a few concluding remarks, and uh, and then uh, um, again, hopefully, you'll join us in the uh, the networking sessions. So uh, sit back, uh, relax, and uh, stand by. And uh, uh, we're about to to I'm about to introduce um, our first uh, set of speakers.